Welcome everyone, I'm glad you clicked. Let's start now. And today, we're gonna talk about something other than the robo-taxis. Last time you had some, what sounded to me, some crazy uh, forecasts about um, autonomous taxis. Well, no, in some of the earlier videos, we were just talking about how we thought the robo-taxi opportunity was one of the most exciting things about Tesla. They're gonna be around like next month, according to you. The next month, no, it's January, 2020. We said at the earliest, maybe by the end of this year, and we'll have to see what happens. But really, even if the timeline gets pushed out a little bit, if you discount the value back to today, you still get a share price that's a lot higher than $500. If you discount it into eternity, you could probably get to a million. <laughs> a million dollars a share? Well, maybe, you'll have to ask ARK. Guys, thank you so much for coming back. It's great to see you again. We just passed the 400 subscriber mark, which is crazy. And today I wanna to follow up on some information from the short squeeze video and talk a little bit more about the Tesla converts. I found some really interesting commentary on the converts and how they play into the short interest in Tesla. So I wanna take a look at that. I also wanna take a look at two different billionaires who support Tesla in their own way. One by buying converts and the other one buying the stock. Let's get started right now. Now. So we're going to go through all this information quickly because there's a lot to get to, but I just want to thank everybody for all of their comments. I've seen and read all of them and we'll be getting to a lot more in the later videos. So first, just a quick note on Tesla trading and my investment. If you've been watching, you know that I first established a position in November of 2019 around $350. One thing that I completely neglected to mention, and it's sort of relevant for the purposes of evaluating what could happen technically with the stock. Now, a big disclaimer please don't take advice from me I don't know what I'm talking about it's debatable if anybody does when it comes to stocks uh, but here's what I was thinking is there was a technical factor going into the end of 2019 where I thought you might have a situation with Tesla that was sort of the opposite of tax loss selling so tax loss selling is when you have a position and going into the end of the year and institutions do this especially going into the end of the year you will sell your losing positions in order to offset taxable gains from your winners in the middle of the year tesla was probably a big winner for a lot of the shorts but given that the market as a whole rallied over 30 percent tesla probably became a very big sore spot in their portfolio and i thought there was a chance that they would do tax loss covering going into the end of the year so i thought there was a good technical sort of of backup behind my fundamental thesis. That's part one. Part two, when the stock started to take off in January, my confidence in the underlying fundamentals really increased because I realized that there was something else going on. It wasn't just technical. In my short squeeze video, I basically draw the conclusion that what's led to the increase in the stock price recently has been related to things like China and all of the positive news coming out of Tesla and not necessarily technical factors. But let's go through a few things real quickly. Here's Chamath. Uh, and particularly with the converts, what's so beautiful is it's downside protected because it sits on top of all the equity and the other debt. And so if you have any concern that there's liquidity issues or if you have any concerns that the company may have to sell, they get paid first. So to me, it was a riskless option on the Edison of our generation. But you weren't, you're, you're, you, not, you weren't necessarily comfortable enough with this story to buy the common stock? The, re the reason is because the common stock is not controlled, unfortunately, enough by him or the insiders. So anyway, for somebody who supports Elon Musk, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit of an unusual position to take. He's basically saying, I want the downside protection of the bonds while being able to participate in the upside as the bonds convert to equity. But if he's confident, he certainly didn't get as much leverage on his bet if he would have bought the equity or about options. So here's a funny article from CNBC, which they wrote uh, May 23rd, 2019, Oracle's Larry Ellison got crushed on his Tesla investment this year. That ended up not being the case. Uh, he put a billion dollars in when he joined the board in December of 2018, and he's now up 60% on that investment. So he made 600 million. Uh, I was researching this question of how the converts might affect the short interest in Tesla. And once again, Tesla Investors Club on Reddit comes to the rescue. And there's somebody here which had a 
great post. I'll leave a link to it in the description. And he sort of goes into why he thinks that there's really no strong relationship between the convertibles outstanding and the short interest. And just to back up a little bit, when you buy a convertible security, you're basically buying two things. You're buying a bond and then you're buying the right to convert the par value of that bond into a certain number of shares. Based on the conversion ratio, you get a certain price. Just to pick a very easy example, if you had a thousand par dollars of bonds and the ratio was 0.5, it would mean that the security would convert into two $500 shares. Usually when a convert is issued, the company places a premium on the conversion factor to make the transaction less dilutive than it would be if they sold equity at the prevailing price. And you usually see converts with tech companies and companies that don't have present cash flow, also like mining companies. Um, they're a lot more common than they are in stable, mature uh, cash flowing businesses because you'd rather raise debt. For example, I took a look through Apple's 10K. They have no converts whatsoever. So Tesla has a helpful table and their IR section on their website. And it's a few years out of date. So some of these convertible notes have already matured, but they basically made a table where they show you, okay, hey, here are all our convertible senior notes. Here's the issuance date, the interest rate. You can see that the interest rates are very low, so they're getting a good interest rate on these things. And then the approximate conversion price. In other words, what is the implied share price that the instrument converts into? I'll show you what I mean in a model in, in one second. Um, so just going back for a second, you can see, for example, right here that they had a convertible senior note, which matured in March of 2019. And the aggregate principal amount was $920 million. So I'm doing it on my calculator right now, but 920 million divided by the conversion price, let's just say 360, means that there were two and a half million underlying shares against those converts. And actually that lines up with what Tesla tells us right here. So if we look at March, 2019, you would expect that if people were hedging their convert position, that in March, right around here, the short interest would actually go down, but instead it went up. And let me back up even a little bit further. One thing that investors will try to do is protect themselves from the risk that the company faces liquidity issues or maybe even goes bankrupt. And so they will take a long position or buy the convert, but place an offsetting position where they short the shares, the underlying amount of shares that they would be entitled to convert their position into as an offsetting feature of the position as a whole. And so in theory, that protects them on the downside. Although if you look at the yields here, the interest rate, I mean, it would be pretty dumb to do this with Tesla because on a hedge basis, you're you're making almost nothing once you take out the, the equity upside. So the real attractive feature of these converts is that you get stock. So maybe Chamath had a point. So I kind of determined that maybe this person on Reddit was right. And maybe I didn't have to worry too much that the converts in Tesla's capital structure were adding to the short shares. And let me now rewind three times. The reason that I felt that was important is because I wanted to make sure that when I was looking at the short interest, I was getting a true representation of how the short sellers felt about the value of Tesla, not the short sellers in combination with some convert holders that just for financial reasons happened to be hedging their position. One other note, Tesla does purchase offsetting calls to mitigate against the dilution from issuing some of these converts. So I wanted to find other companies that had big converts. And it says here that Vodafone issued this huge bond. But when I went and looked at it, it was minuscule compared to the size of their market cap. So here's what I did. Uh, I ran a screen on Y charts. And then I wanted to take any companies where at least 14% of the shares outstanding were sold short. So when I sorted by market cap, there's Tesla right there at the top. And then you've got some cloud companies like Twilio and Coupa. And then you have some other interesting ones that I wasn't quite sure about, like Western Union Company. Um, Caesars Entertainment down here, I'm pretty sure has something going on with uh, merger arb traders that are doing something with the stock that honestly, I, I don't really understand. So the point of doing this was I wanted to see if there were any correlation between the most heavily shorted large market cap companies in the U.S., and whether or not those companies had converts outstanding. So here's what I found. I went through the 10 Qs and 10 Ks of basically each company. And here's what I found. I did this as a percentage of market cap. People will probably have their own opinions about whether I should have done it as a percent of market cap or, as, or underlying convertible shares as a percentage of the total shares outstanding. But I'm already making this more complicated than it needs to be. So let's just focus on the high level. 
The point here is that for the companies that do have converts, so you can see basically, I don't know, 60 or 70% of these companies actually do have converts. And here is the convert face value as a percentage of the total market cap. So for Tesla, it's five, uh, Twilio, it's three, Coupa's is nine and a half. Zillow is an interesting one. The face value of their converts actually account for more than their short interest. Uh, Wayfair is about equal. And then you go down the list. So again, disclaimer, this is not the perfect optimal way to look at it. Optimally, you would go and figure out how many underlying shares are represented by the face value of the convert, but it's really not worth it for this high level analysis. I just wanted to get a sense. I did, however, do it for Tesla. So I'll just show you very, very quickly. The dollar amount I pulled from their 10K where they list all of their converts. Here's the yield and the maturity. So the conversion ratio, and this is standard across all converts that I've seen. The conversion ratio represents how many shares you get per $1,000 of face value of the convertible instrument. So a conversion ratio of 2.7 means you get 2.7 shares for every thousand, and that implies a per share value of 360. Said a different way, 360 times 2.788 is a thousand. So to figure out the number of shares underlying the face amount of the convert, I just took the face amount times the conversion ratio. And these shares are in millions. And I had a little check here to make sure I was doing my math right. By the way, I think I can share this in Google Documents. I know uh, some people have been asking for examples of models. If people are interested in this, I can figure out an easy way to do it, an easy and secure way to do it. Let me know. When I added up the number of shares underlying the converts, I got to 13.8 million. That compares to 184 million of total diluted shares outstanding for Tesla and approximately 27 to 28 million shares that are sold short. So what does all this stuff mean? To me, it means I don't think there's a lot of short activity related to hedging these converts. And if people are playing this stock simply for a short squeeze, I personally would be very careful about that. And given that Western Union had no converts, but a huge short interest, I was also trying to figure out why the short interest was so high. If anybody knows, let me know. I really don't know what's going on with the company. Maybe the CEO is watching. If so, get in touch with me and uh, I'll have you on the show. Guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.